What's up guys, I just wanted to kind of make an OG style vid where I just pick up the camera press record and start filming and just talk for a few minutes. I don't want to make it too long, but I kind of miss making these old type of videos where I just talk because recently with my short form content, mainly on TikTok, a little bit of YouTube shorts, it's just a ton of uh, try and talk for a sentence, mess up a few times before I get it right. So that could be frustrating. So I just want to talk about the MLB pennant race right now. Could have talked about NFL Week 1 since that wrapped up with Bills Jets last night, and it was an interesting Week 1 for sure. But we got three, four weeks till the MLB playoffs start. Um, three weeks, actually, which is just absolutely incredible. Uh, three weeks today till Tuesday, October 3rd, all the wild card Game 1s. So we're going to talk about what those matchups might look like. Um, the races that we got left, the AL wild card is epic the nl wild card um for the last spot is epic um the nl central the cubs and the brewers the brewers are only up three games and the al east the orioles are up three games on the rays so we'll get it started with the american league east now these teams play each other at camden yards for a four game set this weekend i cannot wait for that the opening game is on fox thursday night great to see those two smaller market al east teams that um, I can't say spend time at the bottom of the division um, because the Rays are always good, but it's certainly pretty much the last matchup you would expect as an AL East race. It's so rare. It Rays and O's at the top, Yanks and Sox at the bottom. Very interesting. The Blue Jays also closer to the Rays and O's because the Blue Jays are looking to get in the playoffs. But the O's should be fine to close out the division, absolutely, um, because I'm not that high on Tampa right now because... Shane McClanahan, Jeffrey Springs, Andrew Rasmussen all had Tommy John surgery. So what really is the Tampa Bay Rays rotation aside from Tyler Glass now heading into this postseason? Now, they could still manage decency, competency, because they have um, Aaron Savali, who they got at the deadline, along with Zach Eflin, who has been rock solid for them here in 2023. Um, and the other thing is they don't have uh, Wander Franco, um, obviously because he's made some poor decisions, apparently. But Randy Rosarain is a stud, so watch out. Wild card series at the Trop. I'm expecting big things from a Rosarena. Bro, Re remember 2021, the Red Sox and the Rays, ALDS. Randy Rosarena goes off in his first game of that postseason following the 10 home run postseason in 2020. In that game one, first off, he scored. Um, I, I don't even remember what was first. Yeah, first off, he scored from first, I'm pretty sure, on a base hit. That you certainly wouldn't expect to score from first on. It didn't even go to the wall. Um, that was pretty early in the game. Then he absolutely launches one to the moon, almost hits the catwalk. Instead, it lands at the back of the first deck. An epic Titanic shot skyscraper that he admired. Joe Davis was epic in this game. I don't know why I'm talking about Red Sox Rays game one. I'm just talking about Randy. And I'm trying to not like go on and on and rambling. Um, because I actually like talking like this, but I just tend to ramble. But Randy would later uh, steal home in that game. So postseason Randy is just so fun to watch. I just want to put that out, I put that out there. Uh, but the Orioles should be the number one seed in the AL because the Rays, who are three back, have the second best record in the AL, and nobody's even that close after that. Um, the AL is kind of actually light record-wise after the top two, but then there's a bunch of good records, so there's going to be a team with a good re record probably that misses the postseason. You're talking upper 80s, almost 90-win team. That's going to miss the postseason, even with the six-team field. Um, so the Orioles are going to win the American League East. It's going to be an ALDS game one in Baltimore, which is going to be an amazing sight. Good for the O's. I'm so happy about it. Then you get um, the AL wild card. Let's talk about the AL West race. I forgot about that. I forgot to mention that. So we do have three division races. The NL Central, two-team race. Brewers-Cubs, the AL East, two-team race. Orioles race. Both have a pretty strong favor in the Orioles and the Brewers, but the AL West, all right, the AL West has a pretty strong favorite at this point too because it's the Houston Astros up two games on the Mariners and the Rangers. The Rangers free fallen, however, they've now won three straight, so maybe the Texas Rangers are getting their season back on track after they had um, the second, third best record in the AL for so long. Honestly, like a top four record in MLB for the majority of the year up until August when they had a 4-14 and 14 stretch. But the thing with Texas is, like, if these three wins that they just rattled off, two of them were against Oakland, 
than last night against, uh, I don't even know. But if Texas is to get their season back on track, I wouldn't be that surprised because while during this stretch where they've been collapsing, I've just been saying how they have a good roster top to bottom. The Rangers have the better record, have the better roster than the Seattle Mariners, absolutely. The Mariners are the team that's been playing with the momentum, playing with the fun, playing with the incredible fan base, playing with the super fun superstar of Julio Rodriguez who has exploded in the second half. Um, the Mariners are the team that was in the playoffs last year. But Texas has the better roster. You look at Corey Seager having the best season of his career. I don't know about war-wise because he wasn't healthy for some of it, but Corey Seager is playing the best baseball of his career, absolutely. And then you got Simeon and Marcus. You got um, Adolis Garcia having a phenomenal year as well. And then it just goes down. You got... Um, is Josh Young hurt? Is he out for the year? I don't even know. But you got Mr. Um, Nathaniel Lowe over there at first base. Uh, you got phenomenal catcher in Jonah Heim. The Rangers are uh, just phenomenal because in the rotation, even without DeGrom, you have Scherzer. You got Jordan Montgomery. You got Dane Dunning. And then you got um, John Gray. And you got Andrew Heaney. And uh, I feel like I might be forgetting one other one as well. So the Texas Rangers are absolutely phenomenal. And that's why I think that they turn their season around enough to make it to the postseason. Meanwhile, I think the Toronto Blue Jays are a team that I've always been high on. And then the Seattle Mariners, like, they're the Seattle Mariners. Am I, I going to go against the Mariners to get this last playoff spot? I just might. I just might. Because Toronto's fantastic. Seattle, Texas play each other for uh, two different series, seven games in the team's final 10 games of the year. So in that final week and a half, you're going to see a lot of Seattle versus Texas. So that's why I like Toronto to get in because either both of those teams, Seattle and Texas, play average in that stretch or one of them absolutely falls off. Um, so I think this really is great for Toronto, and that's why Toronto is listed with the highest percentage to get in out of those three teams at 74%. The Rangers have like 64, Mariners 61, I believe, um, in terms of the percentage. So, man, I just would probably go against, really, would I trust the Rangers more than I would trust the Mariners in those final games, though? I'm going to say the Blue Jays make it to the five seed. Blue Jays up at the five seed, and we get Blue Jays Rays. And then six, I could see it going either way between the Rangers and the Mariners. So we're going to get Blue Jays Rays at the Trop in the wild card, just like we did in 2020 wild card. But that was an 8 1 matchup with the Rays being heavily favored, took care of them in two games. This, this should be fun. And I think Toronto, even with the worst record, should come into this series as favorites because I think they're better than Tampa Bay. Um, and then you, you're talking about the Minnesota Twins playing either the Rangers or the Mariners. And I think Houston has the division locked up. I know they're only up two games, but I saw this coming even when they were like a game behind. I just always felt like ever since they got Verlander that they're the absolute best team out of those three in the AL West. Um, so now we're talking about the National League a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Um, obviously the Braves have the best record in the league. The Dodgers obviously will have the second best record in the league. Um, in the NL, you're gonna well for, first off for the AL. Let's talk about that for a sec. Um, you want the six seed rather than the five seed. So obviously you're gonna try and win and get the five because there's a race. So you just want to win as much as you could and secure your spot. But if you finish at the six, you actually end up luckier than the team who finished at the five because you get to play Minnesota. If you finish at the six, the number five seed has to go into the trop and play the race team. Who I know they've lost McClanahan. Springs, Rasmussen, so they're not what they could be, but they're still a definite, definite better team than the Twins when you look at the month of October. And like I said, like the Rays still could put it together for a wild card series, a short series with Glass now, Eflin, Savali. So I think Toronto is going to have to, because Toronto is going to play better than Texas and Seattle. Toronto will get the five seed and get the harder matchup, whereas Seattle or Texas, whoever gets in is going to get to go at Minnesota and play a team who hasn't won a playoff game in a very, very long time before I was born. Uh, it's craziness because they've been a fairly regular team in the playoffs in this last six years. Um, not every year, but they were there in 17, they were there in 19, they were there in 20, and they're going to be back here in 23. 
um, in terms of the Minnesota Twins. So in the NL, the Braves the one, the Dodgers the two. The Brewers should be able to win the division and get the three seed, I think. Now let me point this out, though. Let's talk about the NL Central race. The Brewers are a much inferior lineup to the Chicago Cubs. Now pitching-wise, you could say the Milwaukee Brewers have the edge on the Cubs, but I think the Cubs lineup as an advantage is greater than the Brewers pitching advantage. So I think the Chicago Cubs are the better team overall. I mean, I have Milwaukee getting the division done because they're up by three games right now. But when I look at who's the better team, Brewers or Cubs, guys, it's the Chicago Cubs. They've been, not the Milwaukee's played terrible recently or anything. Um, They haven't like let down what they had going or anything. However, the Chicago Cubs have been phenomenal ever since June. Um, really the second half of July, like the Cubs have been incredible because they were a few games under 500. Now they're 11 over. And when I look at the Cubs lineup from top to bottom, it's far, far superior to what the Milwaukee Brewers have going from top to bottom. The Milwaukee Brewers don't have that many good hitters. You have Christian Yelich and Wilson Contreras. Again, not even any superstars, but two good hitters in that lineup. And then you're looking at guys like Mark Canna, Carlos Santana hitting way too high in the lineup. You just have so many guys that really like only one or two of these guys should even be in the lineup when you look at guys like Joey Weimer. Anyway, Milwaukee fans are probably like chill with having guys like Joey Weimer, Bryce Terang in the lineup every day. That Monasterio dude who they replaced Brian Anderson with at third base, with, which I think is a wild, wild decision. Just because Anderson struggled for a little, got hurt, they're going to take him out for this Monasterio dude who probably shouldn't be in the big, certainly not starting. It's just wild decision-making by a team who's trying to contend. But anyway, when I look at the, what is that, the NL uh, Central, the Brewers should be fine. The Cubs, though, up and down the lineup, bro, they have a good team. You got Wisdom of Patrick, you got Saya Suzuki, you got Mike Talkman, obviously Bellinger is the star. I mean, it just goes on and on. They have a bunch of good hitters, Dansby Swanson, Nico Horner. It just goes on and on. Jan Gomes is one of the honestly solid hitting catchers in the league. It just goes on and on for the Cubs. You got Ian Happ. I mean, it's just unbelievable how many solid players that the Chicago Cubs have. These guys guys are not all stars. These guys are not all stars, but they have – an absolute realm of competency, which the Milwaukee Brewers do not have up and down their lineup. So the Phils and the Cubs are in a battle now for who's going to be home when they play each other in the wild card series, which I think that's going to be a fun series. That Philly will, if it's in Chicago, would Philly really be favored? I would probably take Philly regardless because I'm so high on Philly. If it's in Philly, Philly is going to be a pretty strong favorite in that series. If it's in Chicago, we're going to be talking about pretty much a 50-50 series. Um, but now let's talk about the last wild card spot, all right? So you're talking about the rights to play the Brewers in the wild card series up in Milwaukee. And it's between the Giants, the D-backs, the Reds, and the Miami Marlins. So the D-backs absolutely own this spot right now um they're in a pretty solid position to get it honestly which would be unfortunate not really any of those four teams going to milwaukee would create intrigue i hope it's the giants because i'm kind of a giants fan when you talk about who i like out of a west coast team it's giants year after year they're just my west coast team i love the san francisco giants and that's just how it is i'm just like just a low-key giants fan who always roots for them um, that's what I'm hoping, and I low-key think they might. I think if it's not the D-backs, it's going to be the Giants. D-backs play the Giants, just a two-game set in Arizona. The Giants absolutely need to win one of those on the road in Arizona if they want a chance. Ideally, both. Um, the Reds and Marlins are still in this thing, though, so I guess I would have to take either the D-backs or the Giants, one of those two, to play the Milwaukee Brewers in the wild card. The Cubs will play the Phillies. And here's one last thing that I want to say. The uh, playoffs absolutely need to become reseeded after the wild card round because now 
you're talking about the Braves are the one seed, and they literally have to play the winner of the, the good wild card series, the 4-5 matchup. While, while the Dodgers are the two seed, the lower seed than the Braves, yet the Dodgers get to play the winner of the bad wild card series, 3-6, the worst division winner taking on the worst wild card, rather than the two absolute best wild cards, because the four seed is a better team than the three seed, and the five seed is a better team than the six seed. That's just how it goes in MLB, bro. So it's brutal, brutally disgusting that they don't reseed after a round. Um, you know, I think, like, the fact that the six seed is usually a better spot to land at than the three seed, you just got to deal with that. But the reseeding thing, that's so on MLB, and we need to, like, fight to get that fixed, fellas.